All right, here we are. I'm Pat. I'm Terry with the Party of Two Cruising. Yeah, so we're going to give you the review of on the, the Carnival Freedom. Freedom from the Carnival Freedom. Freedom. It's, we're getting ready to go to bed and then wake Our up and get off. Our balcony room. So we're going to give you the review. All right, first of all, let's talk about embarkation. Embarkation was pretty much a breeze. Uh, not the ship, the, it was a breeze to do it. Um, we got in there, we showed our Verifly app, they scanned our passport, and pretty much that was it. And then we boarded about, what, about 10.45. Very easy, Yeah. very easy fast. Peasy. They didn't even ask about vaccines or nothing, really. No, nope. we just showed them the Verifly app and we that were done. It. No testing, nothing. Right. We got on the ship pretty quick. We went and got our mustard drill out of the way. And we were pretty much on vacation after that. Right. that Again, let's fun. talk about the ship itself. The ship is, it's older ship. Um, our cabin, it's a, as you can see in the background here, it's a nice cabin. The problem with the cabin is it's the same cabin that they did when they built the ship. It's not updated or anything. No. It has... Uh, as small you can TV. see, right? Small TV, as you'll see here in the video, and it it has a smell. All yes. the hallways have smells. It smells like bathroom. Yes, it sounds like you know people really had a bad night. Um, and I'll show you why. Right here, look in this video it right like here. Poo poo. You'll see. Yeah, it does. It smells like poo poo. And you'll see here in the video that. The reason I believe it is, is when people go to the restroom in their cabin, they have these vents at the bottom of the door, which go all the way through to the hallway, and then it smells in the hallway. So sometimes you go into the hallway, you don't smell it, but then other times it it's is really very, bad. very strong and very bad. All right, so the rest of the ship, other than, other than the smell, is very well kept clean. It's very clean. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's big. Right. It's a lot bigger than the Paradise. Right. Now, one of the things you'll see here again in this video is you'll see how dark around the elevators are. It's uh -huh. pretty dark. The colors are dark, and it's not really good lighting all around right. the ship. And you almost feel like you're in a morgue. Not that I've ever been in a morgue, but, well, I have actually been in a morgue, but um, it's very, very dark. It's dark. They need, to, it. they need to lighten it up a little bit. And, and the hallways and stuff are very cramped. For being a mid-sized ship for Carnival, everything will seem to be very cramped. Yeah. All right. So another thing is the bars. The bar service was seemed to be very slow. The waiters themselves and the bartenders, absolutely phenomenal. Wasn't their fault. They were just overwhelmed. Very, very busy. I always buy the soda package because if you know me at all, you know I love to drink a lot of Diet Cokes. Well, on the ship, it's Diet Pepsi. <laughs> But I felt bad going up to the bar because they were so busy. I always had to wait for a Diet Pepsi. And I felt bad because they were so busy. And then a lot of times they would see my cup and they know I just went to soda. So they would wait to um, wait on me last because they knew I was going to tip them big or anything. Although I do tip them 50 cents or a dollar for a soda. But they, I was not their top priority. They were serving more drinks. So it's hard to get a, a Diet Coke or your drinks if you just bought the drink package. Uh, or the soda package, I'd say. Right. So that's a negative, although and, they and, were very nice. And remember, we tip on top of the 18% yes. they already charged you on the drink package itself. So remember, when you get a drink package, whether it's a soda package or the uh, liquor package, you pay 18% gratuity. So you add that up by 60 some dollars a day, $69 a day now for the drink package. You paid them quite a bit of tipping already and then we still throw a dollar each on there and they seem to love it that well you give them a dollar they kind of remember you and they're more um apt to wait on you when they see you come up however i found on this ship the bartenders changed a lot so i would go up at one time and try to get a diet coke go back an hour later and it's a different bartender there so they did change out a lot more than some of the other ships right now going into the service in the main dining room service was absolutely okay. great we had these three individuals, they were awesome, uh, great waiters. I mean, we were in and out of, uh, it was almost like they were pushing us to get out of the dining room every night because the food was coming one right after the other. And again, we never had a cold meal. I keep seeing people saying our meal was cold. Never have we ever had a cold meal at all. 
we had anytime dining, which we really liked. And I found out that if you have anytime dining, you usually almost always sit by yourself. Where if you go into the dining room, they'll set you with people you don't know in larger, bigger tables, which really I kind of like sitting with just my group or just with Pat. So I like anytime dining for those reasons also. I like sitting with other people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no. She likes to talk um, too much. I like to talk to people. I like to mingle. But so it doesn't matter to me either way, but uh, works for me. Um, the service everywhere else was good. The shops. Uh, anywhere else we went, the service was good. The people on the, the, the staff, I should yeah. say, are very nice on this ship. Very Correct. accommodating. Right. All right. All right. Let's talk about entertainment. Entertainment. Um, the shows. We went to the 80s show. That was really good. I like that. Uh, we enjoyed that. We've seen mm -hmm. it before, but it was, uh, again, very good. Uh -huh. uh, the bands around the ship were good. Uh, the only negative we had, and I'll let or tell you about well, it was out by the pool. Before I get in the negative, I will say the Newlywed Game was our one of our favorites. Oh, absolutely. And we do love the cruise director, James, on the ship. We really, really liked him. He was very funny, very professional. He did the Newlywed Game, I think, better than any other cruise director we had. But the thing we were talking about entertainment uh, as far as out by the pool, because you know I like to sit out by the pool. Well, I know a couple nights ago or a couple days ago, Carnival Fard a comedian for inappropriateness or words that he used. Today sitting out in the pool and it was crammed with a lot of kids in the pool, a lot of ladies like me out there, even older ladies, and they were playing like a lot of rap music real loud and some of the words in there was very offensive to me. It had the F word in it, it had other cuss words, and I just did not really enjoy that music out by the pool today. Um, I like music, almost any kind, but I don't like rap real, real loud or real, real loud. Um, I don't know if it's, what kind of music When it's it inappropriate. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and remember, there's children out there swimming in the pool all the time, and the language was over the top. I even left because I got tired of hearing it. You know, I don't care for it. I'm honest. I don't like rap music. Uh, very few rap songs I like. And after a while, it gets old when that's all they're playing. Uh, they played no rock. And, you know, normally some of the ships will play, you know, 80s rock and stuff like that. They didn't play anything but no. pretty much rap. And then they played the steel uh, drums. drums. And that was okay. We can get into that because it's more or less Caribbean music. And uh, But the rap music was just uh, over the top because it was so loud. And it was just the same old stuff over and over. I ended up going back to the cabin. All right. So... At night, about 9 o'clock, you know, a lot of people have been out in the pool all day. They've gone to some shows. They're hungry. And this ship follows suit with the Mardi Gras. About 9, 9.30 at night, there's nothing to be found to eat except no pizza. pizza. And the pizza line literally went from the back of the ship to the back rail of the Every ship. Every night. And it was a good probably 45-minute wait for most people to get a piece of pizza. Uh-huh ridiculous. They used to serve hot dogs and hamburgers at night about 11, 1130. They don't do that anymore. They're pretty much cutting back more and more and more. And pizza was, again, the only thing you could get to eat. I cannot even find the app on our uh, Carnival Hub app for room service. There are no, there's no tickets in here. There's no coupons you leave on the door at all anymore. And there was no way to order room service, I guess, unless you call by phone. I will tell you this. When it was late at night, we'd walk back there to get our hot chocolate. And I'd see hot so chocolate many, is good. Yeah, we love hot chocolate. But so many people would be coming back there, too, and they would see the pizza line and just turn around so mm. they didn't get food. And I did feel bad because a lot of people like to eat late at night or they slept a lot during the day and they didn't get to eat as much. So I do think Carnival needs to do something about that. More late night options. Right. Like when you're when, if you have 6 o'clock dinner, and you eat, and then you go, say, to the casino, or you go see all the shows by 11 or 12. They may want to go to the casino afterwards, yeah. and there's nothing to eat. Last night, which was our third night, there was not even any cups for hot chocolate. Took them all away. You notice in our closing video last night, we didn't have any hot chocolate. We had ice cream. So <laughs> we had ice cream because there was, they took all the cups away and basically turned all the machines off. I, I don't get it, but people are hungry. Okay, now you uh, let's talk about the internet. Uh, the internet, you know they're raising the prices of the internet up, yep. and I don't remember how much it was. I didn't get into it. 
we buy the premium internet because we like to upload a video here and there uh, while we're on the cruise and we like to, you know, talk to people. I do. But the internet was horrible. I mean, it, you couldn't half the time even get on Facebook and I don't have the social. I have the premium, which is the most expensive one, which after I did it, it really ain't worth the money because you can't get on. So the internet, hopefully since they're raising the prices, maybe they're gonna go to the Starlink as Royal Caribbean is, which is supposed to be 10 times better. Hopefully that's what they're raising the price for is to do that. Let's talk about the service at guest services. Um, the line, thank goodness, and we're not bragging, that we are diamond. So the diamond, the platinum, and the faster to the fun, which they haven't brought back as of yet. Uh, you, you don't have to really wait in the long line, but the line for guest services, and again, not that they weren't working hard. They had three people there working, uh, was down the hallway, almost to the theater. Uh, guest services is this board right in the atrium, and the line went all the way back. So they really need to work on that too. But I don't know why people have so many problems with guest services. We oh. very seldom ever go there. Well, we had to go there this time because I lost my wallet sitting out by the pool. So I was like, oh my gosh, I looked everywhere. So then we went down to guest services. We got in the line for Diamond and Platinum members, which only had one person ahead of us. And by the time we got down there, guess what? Somebody turned into my wallet. So I really was very, very thankful. Even my $20 was still in there. And um, She's my card. So, so I was very happy that they found my wallet and turned it into guest services. But like I said, the lines were very long. I'm um, thank God we didn't have to wait in there. They were, and, and whoever found that wallet, it was a little red wallet you found out there by the Lido deck. It probably fell under our chair. We're not sure when she got her bag out, but thank you for being yeah, honest and turning nice. that in. All right, let's talk about the excursions and the two stops that we went to. This was a four-day cruise out of Port Canaveral, naturally. You already knew that. Going to Nassau and to Princess K. Okay. Nassau, we decided after a, a debate all morning, we didn't really have anything we wanted to do in Nassau, so we ended up staying on the ship all day long, and we brought you Nassau several times, so we didn't even get off the ship. It, it was a beautiful day, though. It was actually a beautiful day. So we spent most of our day sitting and lounging around and uh, by the pool and by the back pool. And uh, Then we went to Princess K. The next day. Yeah, Princess K. Let's whew, let's talk about Princess K. For some reason, I don't know why they don't go to Half Moon uh, Key. It's right behind it. It's like two miles away. You can see the ships at Princess K when you're in Half Moon K. Okay. But this, so we the, we go to Princess Key. That and, is owned by Carnival and Princess. Correct. They own this part of that island. It's a big, pretty big island actually. And uh, we got off and. It's a beautiful beach. It's absolutely beautiful. Loved but again, it. as I've told you before, make sure you bring water shoes. Yep. It's very, very rocky going uh -huh. out. Now, once you get past about maybe 20, 20 yards out into the water, it's beautiful. You'll be fine. Uh, but let's talk about the food. Well, they have burnt. one food area. And they had uh, Caribbean jerk chicken. They had rice. They had burgers, hot dogs, fruits, Fruit, and salads, food. and stuff uh -huh. like that. Drink. But I'll let you tell her. I'll let her tell you about the negative of the whole thing. Well, what we didn't like, and we noticed it before, and I'm never going to eat there again, is it has a lot, a lot of flies. We couldn't even eat our food for swapping like this to get the flies away from our food. The hotel we were eating, both of us just stopped and left uh, the food area because it has so many flies. They need to do something about that. But other than that, I did love the island. I uh, rented me a float for the day. It was $20. Pat and I both played in the water a long time on the float and had a good day. We did, and the water was nice and warm, everything. Clear, it's mm -hmm. so clear there, right. warm. You wouldn't know that there was a storm not really that far away from us to the south of us, because it was a beautiful day there. Okay. It did pour at one point, and the yes. winds really kicked up, and I almost got killed by a palm tree. But, um, he did. Yeah, he I got it on video. Did. Yeah. We'll oh. see it. So, terrifying. Yeah, oh, I was just so terrified. But anyway, um, so yeah, the flies were really the only negative part. And uh, but other than that, it's a beautiful island. Oh, just yes. wish they'd go to Half Moon Key more than they do Princess Key. But they do tender us in. It's not a dock or anything like that. They right. tender you by boats into the island. Right. And, back. and now people started getting on the tenders, you had to go get a ticket, and they were up to 40-something numbers that they were calling. 
And if you didn't get a number, then you had to wait till 11 or 11.30 to tender over to the island. And it took that long, almost three hours, to get people off the ship over to the island. And that was basically for people who wanted to leave real early if they had excursions or anything off the island because they do do a lot of excursions over there. They do glass bottom kayaking. They do um, paddle boarding. They do have a lot of activities over there, but they all are extra charges. Right. So, and to me, most of their excursions were really expensive for just kayaking. For an hour of kayaking. And snorkeling. They were pretty expensive. Yeah. All right, so let's give the Carnival Freedom our personal rating. All right, due to the cabin being so outdated, no USB ports, there's only one 110 outlet and one European outlet for all your charging devices, which don't bring a strip, because after 50 cruises, they took that from me on the way on the board. Still mad about it. I'm still I will, angry. I will tell you one thing about the cabin, though, that I like. It is very, very cozy. The beds are very comfortable, and our room was very clean. Our cabin steward, like we said earlier, was over the top good to us. So that outweighs, to me, it being a little outdated because we do bring our own strips. We're very comfortable in this room. So that helps the rating. Okay. Other than the smell. Yes. And, uh, again, to me, being outdated uh, and the darkness around, like, in, like I said, next to the hallways and stuff like that. So the way we're going to start rating everything is by... You, we don't give a ship. You got to earn a ship. So I think on this ship, we're going to give it three and a half ships, maybe close to four ships. And what Pat is saying, instead of rating it by stars, we're going to rate it by ships. So they can get up to five ships means five points. So we're giving this ship barely a four. Just shy of a four. Yeah, just shy of a four. Needs to be upgraded. Because so remember, there's no... There's no whale tail. <laughs> so maybe that uh, took away the total four. <laughs> <laughs> no, the whale tail didn't matter. It did to me. I like the whale yeah, it tail. Does look, it does look kind of funny. And you'll see a lot of the videos better. that it's, it's kind of funny. So, yeah. All righty. So that's it. I'm Patrick. And I'm Terry. And we and are Party at Two cruising. cruising. And we'll see you in hopefully three days. We'll be back on the Paradise out of Tampa. But... With the storm out there, we're not really sure what's going to happen, so that may get canceled. But we'll let you know. If not, we'll see you on the next one.